Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Guild Gab, episode 78. This is a show all about Guild Wars 2, and today we're going to be discussing the upcoming April 19th spring update and, uh, and the community response to that update so far. We don't actually know a lot, so we're going to kind of discuss that. We got a preview, a trailer of, uh, of that update announcing it, and got a teaser of the new short bow. I'm going to mispronounce it. Chuka and Chumpawat? I think, not Chupa Close and Cabra, enough. something like that. <laughs> it's got yeah. two names. <laughs> and then Champa we're going to be discussing um, the story of Chupa Raid Wing 2. Finally, we're going to kind of talk about that and, and the lore behind it rather than the, the mechanics and the bosses and stuff like that. So, yeah. all that and more today. First, let me introduce my wonderful co host, MMO Inks, and Alex of the RPG Shack. Corvus, unfortunately, <laughs> is sick today, so. We send you yeah. our healing waves, Mr. Corvus. Hope you feel better. I am a druid. <laughs> so, uh... Oh, yeah. You've been playing... You, Mr. RPG Shack, have been playing raids. I have been playing raids, yeah. And How's I got... that been going? Uh, well, I, I got my first Veil Guardian kill, which I Yay! was super happy with. Um, of course, I did all the work and carried the other nine members of the team. <laughs> uh, as the healer, of course. Of course, of course. <laughs> of course. With, with my epic DPS, um, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a really great feeling when I finally killed it, and um, it's, it's been a very frustrating fight for me, but loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And then the thing is, like, we, we, we ran through to Gorsaville, and then first time in, we ended up getting him to like thirty percent, straight nice. off. So. But then somebody started playing saxophone in Discord, and uh, that's that's not even that's not even a joke, by the way. Someone started playing saxophone in Discord, and <laughs> and, and and it sort of fell apart from there. Um, but yes, since uh, since then I've been diving around on 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 Madrid, doing um, I cleared the camp, and I've got Matthias to about thirty percent as well. And uh, I was with Inks the other night for a bit of Sabbath reaction with uh, Mighty Teapot as well. Um, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. So the, the the only one that I've not actually fought yet is um, uh, Slothosaur. Yeah, but um, now 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 that I found some raiding buddies, I'm yeah, I'm in. I'm having a lot of fun, and also I want the. We'll probably touch on this in the shot. I want that Matthias staff. Yeah. You in you in like everybody else. That, that's yes. all they talk. Of. Every time we go to kill him. Every, did anybody get the staff? Who got the staff? Did anybody get the staff? Yeah. It's only like 600 uh, magnetite shards, isn't it? Yeah, but, like I think a couple of people have bought it by the, at this point. But, uh, I mean, you know, they want to kill him a couple of times, see if it drops instead of having to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, can, you can trade um, drops in, can't you, for magnetite shards? Or is it only can, the mini pets you can do? Well, you can you can trade the mini pets in, or you can trade extra mini pets in. Yeah, uh, and if you salvage any item that comes from the raid, it gives you sixty magnetite shards. That's so if right. you get so if you get an extra weapon or even a boots box, like a boot box or a, an armor box or something mm -hmm. that you don't really need, and you salvage it, you get sixty magnetite shards. Mm -hmm. But that boot box is a boot box is ascended armor, isn't it? Or the, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Who'd salvage ascended armor? Well. <laughs> it depends on how many you get. I've gotten like yeah, three yeah, heavy yeah. boot box drops oh, from uh, from Wing One. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need this many. <laughs> Give me another piece. Give me a chest piece or some hands or something. <laughs> I yeah, I probably really should have like an extra set just for like world vs world stuff. Because as it is right now, everybody's geared for raids. They're not geared to do anything else really. Mm. But I've still got my Zerka set kicking around. Yeah, Viper yeah. Zerker is pretty much all I have. Yeah, I mean, I, I you can convert those in the Forge if I really oh, yeah. wanted to. But hmm. I'm curious, uh, <clears throat> Alex, for your Druid, what armor set do you have? What stats? Um, I'm, 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 I'm in the process of changing it. Um, but I'm actually, I'm actually running um full Magi mm. at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, ascended, obviously. So everything is Magi except for my staff, which I think is Zealots. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm in the pro, yeah, um, after having a little bit of a thing, I, th I think my DPS is a little bit, um, lacking, um, mm -hmm. e even if it just helps along the, uh, 
the team. So I'm I'm looking at making the transition across to Zealot. But um, yeah, um, at, at the moment, full Magi, um, you can get. I'm um, I think I'm using. It's not clerics. Um, it's not cleric trinkets I'm, I'm using because you can't get Magi ascended trinkets yet, can you? I don't know. I, don't I, I think, think I just went clerics. Yeah, yeah I just bought what I was so. told to buy. Thank yeah. you, Lumos. I mean, it's either it's either um, cleric, it's either cleric apothecary or magi. Um, the trinkets that I'm using, because in fact, it might be cleric because it does boost my toughness up a little bit, um, right. but but not enough to be the tank. So I'm just loving it. Going, here's my stick. Bzzz, ah, the green numbers. <laughs> I've actually forgotten what dealing damage looks like. I it's know, been right? I've been doing right too for so long now, and just been the druid. It's like I kind of miss my dragon hunter, man. I kind of miss doing all the damage. I see like nine other dudes running in a circle around Sabbath. I'm just like, what the hell are you lot doing around there? Oh, the, the healing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Bjorn Rocker, um, I actually got a, um, a raid trinket last night. It doesn't let you choose Magi, unfortunately. Um, it lets you choose a few um, other bits. I think there's like there's Cavalier and Apothe Apothecary in there, but I don't think Magi's in there, unfortunately. But hey. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 having a lot of fun. What what, what about you guys? How how are you doing in the raids? I heard I heard that um, Inks, you got a drop last night. Oh. Uh yeah, what dropped? Oh, uh, one of Matthias's weapons, one of the white mantle weapons dropped from Matthias, and then a leg box dropped from somebody else. Fantastic. I forget Very who. Nice. Somebody. Yeah, from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, the 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 week before that, the raid group was getting pissed at me because we did. Gorsville dropped a shield, Sabatha dropped her rifle, and then Slothsor dropped a ring. So it was just like drops were raining from the sky. <laughs> I was getting all the drops, and everybody else was getting absolute garbage, and they weren't all overly happy with me. But and it's like I don't really <laughs> I, need I've a shield or a rifle, so yeah. I just salvage all that all stuff. That stuff. I mean, to, to, to be honest, the, the, the first drop that I got was, um, well, I got, I got the Veil Guardian Mini, which very cool, which is There's pretty a, awesome. A feedback. feedback. Yeah. Yeah, Alex, you're getting. Yeah. You're, oh, you're am I? Feedback. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, ah! Oh God! I just vacuumed the floor, so it's a bit slippy. <laughs> oh, and 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 Hannah's just made a face that says she's well impressed with um, with me vacuuming. <laughs> and she just stuck a tongue at me. So now she gets no dinner. <laughs> there we go. Hello. You guys are in my head. There we go. Hey. <laughs> so, um, the next update, the spring update, is coming on the 19th, which is really good because that's when Super Adventure Box is going away. Um, so that same day, we're going to get... Um, the spring update and we don't know we still don't know a lot about it like anet hasn't given us like you know usually they, they come out with like a blog post with like not the full patch notes but like teasers and haven't gotten a lot and there was a post from mo on the forums kind of saying that they like they didn't want to reveal stuff even though they didn't want to make promises and I think the community, I, I gotta say, for once, I, I am very, um, I, I am very, like, on board with the community response because I can understand not wanting to make specific promises of something that's going to come out later this year, but this is, like, three days away, and yeah. you're not going to get, you, like, you can't give us any promises of what's going to be in it? It's just, it was just odd. It's very odd because we're used to having a good idea of what's coming, and we have a vague idea um, mm. but no details. I mean, we, we did get a trailer, like a T, I guess you'd call it a teaser, um, that really mm -hmm. just like announced the release date. And I saw the video as a lot of hype, um, but yeah. not with much detail. Yeah. I, I think odd. it's, yeah, I think it's kind of weird because when, when, when they did quarterly updates in the past and there was like some, some really big stuff, like when the wardrobe came in and was that, was that last year or the year before? I can't. Was it 2014? Two years ago. Year before, yeah, yeah. two years. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 so when like the, all the wardrobe changes and all that came in as part of the quality of life updates, that got blog posts and it got points of interest episodes about it, and you know, 
it was it was a big major thing, and rightly so. But it, with with all of the, the, these kind of quality of life changes that people are expecting, um, there was the the. They've been talking, you know, World v. World's going to get revamped. We're going to be looking at fractals. Everyone's expecting some kind of dungeon change. Um, it's it's probably worth advertising, you know, right. s- some of the things that you're going to be doing. Yeah. So we got, we got, if you follow them on Twitter, there were two teasers today. So there was one about uh, Ranger sword animations seem to have been changed. And the other one was uh, like this raid portal in the middle of that aerodome area in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, we had the we had the teaser trailer from the you know the ten seconds or whatever were the teaser trailer from the other day. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, by this point, surely those things are locked in, almost mm-hmm. unchangeable. At least at key points, you know, why not release a blog post today? At, at, the very latest today saying like, Hey, here's what's, you know, here's sort of what's coming is what you Mm. can kind of expect. Right. Because right now we really don't know too much. Like we know what's going away. We know that Mm -hmm. SAB is going away and we know that the PVP season two is ending. And I think there's certain expectations from people in the community about what they're expecting from the quarterly update. But we don't really know a whole lot. Uh, we can say, I think, with a fair amount of certainty that at Infinium, Infinium, however you say it, uh, the the fractal PVE back piece is finally going to make its way into the game. Yeah, there, there's there's teaser shots of that. Mm-hmm. It appears at Cliffside that boss is getting some sort of rework. Uh, he looks very Revenant-like in a number of his shots. Um, and then of course we've seen the short bow, which really kind of looks like a longbow phoenix skin kind of thing <laughs> but uh i guess we could talk about that a little bit but uh yeah i mean that's really what the trailer was about and then there's a couple extra shots that had nothing to do with anything uh, there was an exalted and a mordrum uh dinosaur and uh, some the gliding into the jungle and i don't know shots that didn't really oh uh the the uh the molten Volcano world oh, boss, yeah, uh, the uh, molten oh, destroyer. I think he's oh, called. Anyway, yeah, the mega destroyer. Yeah, a mega. What is that? I don't know what ha- that has to do with anything. <laughs> Maybe some kind of world boss changes. I don't. I don't know. But uh, yeah, some just weird random shots of random things that <laughs> appear in the game. I don't know. Now, granted, and we know this, and I think there's going to be some backlash from the community from people who don't pay attention to patch notes and stuff. They just know that there's a quarterly update coming. Uh, We have known for some time that this update is going to be looking at existing content and improving existing content. Um, They've said it's it's reducing wait time, uh, you know, getting you to the fun faster, um, increasing rewards. They've told us all this, that it, it this is all about increasing, you know, the systems that are currently in the game, making them better, reducing scribing mm, costs, right. which I'm super excited about. Um, yeah. That's what this is focused on. I think there's going to be a lot of rage from people expecting actual content, which this update it was is simply not about. So it's going to be very content light. Yes, I think. I just hope I, all I the think, changes are damn good to to compensate yeah. for that. Because I think in a in in a way the changes to existing content that they make, um, that can lead to a reinvigoration of current content. Now that if you get people people playing current content again that is just as good if not better than putting new stuff into the game because because if you start chucking new stuff into the game less than less than a year after their first expansion and it's not even the the, the living world season three stuff and they just let the heart of thorns meta maps roll around every two hours and everyone's trying to dive in and get the taxis that if they say hey we're going to make xyz changes to how this content works and how it delivers a rewarding playing experience for you. Revalidating current content is a fantastic idea, and I, for one, would love would love that because I, I mean, I've I've said this before. I don't I don't get time to sit down for three hours yeah. and play, and and play you know an entire meta map. I jumped into Tangled Depths for the first time, and we and it, the map failed in the first ten minutes, and I was yeah. like, oh, oh, so this is what the Chad Garrett is all about. 
Yeah, yeah. See you yeah. in three hours. Yeah. So I uh, the game desperately needs you, you know Heart of Thorns released a bit uh, unpolished, unrefined in many areas. It missed the mark for a lot of players as far as the amount of grind for the reward. So yeah. it, we and we've known since late January, I think early February, that this patch, this, this spring quarterly, was going to be all about refining the game, making uh, Heart of Thorns better, more fun, more accessible, adventures more accessible, scribing costs more accessible slash cheaper. Uh, we, we knew that there would be some like fractal changes, refinements that have to go in. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, Mo made a post saying, hey, listen, you need to do these two achievements, the one to 50 achievements, like the casual hero, whatever they're called, uh, because those are going away. So obviously there's some right. sort of re-tiering going on for fractals. Um and you know who knows what else? Uh, what else is going to be in this update as far as refining the gameplay? There, there's definite areas of the game that um, need that refinement before before you can really move forward. Like Alex is saying, fix the game that exists, make the game that exists more fun, more accessible, and more enjoyable for players, and then add that new content. And I think that's yeah. I mean that's the direction that we're seeing ArenaNet going. I just, I'm a little worried because the vocal community, uh, Reddit, the forums, etc., Twitter, um, they've been, they've been, you know, bloodthirsty at the mouth for content mm-hmm. for such a long time now, and this quarterly is going to bring a tiny bit of, a, a tiny bit of content here and there, and sure, it's going to refine the game so that more people can enjoy those things. I really do believe that they're still going to be foaming at that mouth for that new content. And I feel like all of the good changes or my, my fear is my fear is that all of the good changes that are going into the game that are positive for the game that are going to steer the game in the right direction. Like some of that is going to fall on deaf ears. They're they're just not going to, they're not going to be willing to see past some of that stuff. Uh, They they sort of have Mm -hmm. this blind rage about it and and it's not that i fully blame people for feeling that way for for obvious reasons but uh i just hope people really step back take a moment think objectively about what's being done to the game and the direction it's now going and um try and experience and have fun with you know the changes they made give them proper feedback Mm. Uh, you know if they if they change something in verdant brink for example Go play it a couple of times and say, like, look, this is good or this is bad or this still needs work or whatever the case is, you know. Mm. I'm just not sure that that's really going to happen on a constructive basis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, in, interestingly, it's it, it's stuff that they kind of didn't do with Hearththons, which we have seen them do before, um, that there was a beta for the Edge of the Mists that a few people got at, that some members... Do you remember when when guilds had to sign up for um, trying out Edge of the Mists to to co- go and explore this new content, and then we and then active players gave the feedback, and um, they kind of tweaked it in in that kind of way. And I, I guess to some extent that probably happened when ATT and DNT were kind of testing the raids for them as well. Um, but having said that, there's something that um, Tochi Pez touched on in chat. It says a year before Heart of Thorns, and Heart of Thorns was all about setting the groundwork. Now there is more groundwork being set. A lot of things that, or as far as no, I no, understand, no, no. that's incorrect. Sorry, mm. that's wrong. Mm. Setting the groundwork and uh, fine tuning Heart of Thorns are two different things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when they talk about setting the groundwork, they're talking about uh, setting things up like the mastery system. That's setting the groundwork. Fine-tuning and fixing problems within systems in the game is not setting the groundwork, necessarily. We're not talking about, as far as we know, we're not talking about reinstalling brand new systems in the game. We're talking about tuning the game up or giving the the game a tune-up. We're not talking about reinstalling the cement or the foundation of the game, which is what Heart of Thorns supposedly did for future expansions. We won't know that until we see more expansions right. mm. or actually more content like Living World Season 3 as to whether or not those foundations have actually been laid properly. Mm. Uh, fine-tuning events and the grind rewards and stuff is not resetting the foundation. 
Mm. And like, having said that, I the 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 mastery track, it, the mastery track's fantastic idea in horizontal progression. Um, you know, we've got legendary armors, we've got the legendary armors, we've got the current collection of legendary weapons, but we've already discussed the situation there. Um, so there is. To, to me, the, the way that Heart of Thorns took Guild Wars 2 was that horizontal progression way with the or, with all the new weapon sets, the armor sets, the mastery tracks, and all, all um, and unlocking the elite specializations. Despite the fact it's argued they're arguably arguably a little bit of a power creep, but whatever. Um, and that's where they're going. So I, I think you're absolutely 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 right. I can't talk. Fire. I can't talk. Oh, it's okay. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Peach? You've been you've you've been quiet through this. Um, I this is. I mean, I, I'm really looking forward to all the changes. Like I said, I I really think that they're going to do a major overhaul uh, of all these systems. And should it, should these systems have been in place from the beginning? Sure. But when you're creating something like an expansion with new zones and you're doing a different kind of, like, you know, with with adventures being closed, this day-night cycle with the events being different and meta events, like, it's, it's, a, it's you know, it's, a, it's an evolution of the system that they already had in place. And, you know, I, I, I just think that it's good that they're retouching it up, like you said, instead of just creating new content and saying, oh, well, that old content's lost. You know, nobody likes it. Let's just create new stuff. I think it's great that they're they're going back and, re- and redoing it and, like you said, making current content fun again. Unfortunately, with, and, and it's absolutely true, and people have been seeing this in the chat, um, about it's not just the vocal community who's pissed and who's leaving. People have just left the game and not said a word on social media, and it's very true. Um... And I just think that with this update, you know, if it truly does improve things immensely so much, it makes the game fun again, it makes you want to come back to the game, it's going to take those of us who do still play and those of us who do still have faith in the game and still find it fun to to let everybody know, everybody who has left, it's going to take us, it's going to take a large amount of us saying, wow, this has changed, this is fun again, you need to come back, the rewards are better. And that's sad because, yes, the game should be able to stand on its own. It should it should have a level of, you know, satisfaction that people just, they want to come back on their own accord. But I unfortunately, at this point, in the community's morale is so low, I think it's going to take not only us content creators, it's going to take... You know, just ever you know, you you have to go tell your guildies, hey, come back, try it. Things are different. Things are better now. You know, come come back and and give it a try again and see if you like it any better. Um, because I don't know if people are going to come back on their own accord, and and I hate to say that, and that's very sad, and it makes me very very sad. But I think it's true. So it it's going to take a lot of not only PR on their part, but PR on the players' part to get people to come back. But I, I think kind of part of it is the the natural kind of lifespan and kind of fluctuation of of video games to some extent that you know the the, the game's coming up four years old. Um, you know, people people will want to play other games. Hell, like look at my I'd look at my Steam library and cry mm-hmm. at the amount of stuff that I've got to play. But the thing is, it's like yeah, you know, if people always have their main game or their main kind of game. And people will always co- like. I still play. I still play the original Deus Ex. Every time I want like a fix of something particular, I wander off and I go and see like these really chunky early 3D bodies. But there's there's always something about a game that keeps people coming back. That keeps people coming back. And Guild Wars 2 has that in spades. And apparently people aren't paying attention to what I'm saying and are freaking about about the damn cat. <laughs> oh, he's there. Hello. <laughs> Oh, you can't see. Well, right, you, can see his, you can see his bum is about there. <laughs> <laughs> but my point was that I think, you know, people people who are still in Guild Wars two at this point, three and a half, four years on, they're not um, unless something else completely gets them. You know, that I 
I, I don't think they're gone for good. I, th- I think people will come back because all that it's going to take is one of their mates on Twitter or someone drops them a message and goes, hey, do you see what Guild Wars 2 did? And they go, mm-hmm. ooh, I've not played that in six months. I'll and it's not a in. game with a subscription fee. So it's not a game that, like, you, you know, oh, I'm going to unsub and I quit. You know, it's, you can come back whenever you want. You know, mm. so people, and, and you're absolutely right. There's a million other games out there. I mean, I'm the same way. I look at my Steam library and I'm like, I'm never even going to play half of these games that I own. There's just too mm. much. You can't, you know? I mean, I I do not dedicate a lot of time to Guild Wars 2 anymore because I just can't. There's too much else going on, you know? Mm-hmm. And that, you know, you're right. That's the natural progression. And it's just how it goes. Mm. I mean, it's that's just the truth of it. So... You know, I, I think that um, I think that this is going to keep current players happy. Hopefully it'll bring back some, um, but I think it's going to be the next update. Um, w- people want Season 3. We, we need Season 3. Mm-hmm. We need that infusion of new content, new maps, you know, new, new story. Um, I think that will bring a lot of people back. Yeah, and the, yeah, and I think that there's, I, I think there's, there's a lot of hyperbole and and, and what have you about the fact that people are leaving the game, but my friends list is constantly active, and by friends list I mean people that I added to my friends list back in 2012 because we fought Cole the Skull Smasher together in Harafi Hinterlands, you know. And I, the, the, it was really the, there was the, the, there was a guy who was kind of trying to organise everybody to to kill this giant, and then you know when you do the event up the back. And you go through the caves, and you come out on the other side of the uh, of, of the mod near camp. And we did that. I was like, "All right, all right, all right. Uh, that's that's cool." And he kind of wandered off for a little bit. And then, fast forward about eighteen months, and who do I see leading my instance of the marionette battle? But this guy. And it's it it's pe- people stick around. People stick around who 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 are into it. And again, even if they wander off, like you said, we've got no subscription fee and. Play Guild Wars 2. It's a good game. That's what I say. Also, you can use one of our links to buy the game. It helps out our channel. <laughs> to buy Heart of Thorns. I think, uh, you know, and, and a, lot of what, a lot of what we talk about on this show is from the veteran's pers- perspective. Correct. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. if you're a newer player or if you've just recently picked it up within the last year, you may not feel the exact same way as a lot of us do or maybe a lot of people in chat who are, uh, you know, are being very vocal or being very prominent about their friends leaving and their guilds falling apart and, you know, the people are leaving the game in droves. And there's absolutely some truth there to that. Um, I don't, I guess I don't, I guess I'm lucky that I don't feel it quite as much because I rotate around uh, active communities. If a community starts to be less active, I move on to another guild or group that is active and is playing. Uh, so that you know, I have other players to play the game with, but uh, I'm probably very lucky in that respect. I realize not everybody uh, is as lucky, and it also depends on you know what you play. Somebody mentioned, you know, their World vs. World Guild is leaving, and I can't blame them for doing so. It it hasn't seen an update or any real solid updates in a very, very long time, uh, and we know that stuff's being worked on. But, you know, until they deliver, that's, uh, it's you know, ready, it's, it's hard to convince people to stick around, you know, when when you're able to come in and out of Guild Wars 2 so easily. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that's, right. that's one of the side effects, I think. They did say that, and we said this last week, week but I just want to reiterate. They said that some World vs. World changes are coming on Tuesday. They are bringing back Alpine Borderlands, but that's... The Alpine Borderlands are not coming back on Tuesday, but there are other World vs. World yeah. changes. Yeah. So, but they are bringing back Alpine Borderlands. Mm. Yeah. When I, it's I ready. think that's. I, you know? yeah. As much as, right. as, as as much as it pains me, it's to say, like I mean, I don't world your world that much. I don't. Either. As much as it pains me to see an absolutely beautiful map go, it's yeah. the right choice. It's yeah, absolutely that's the right such thing a to do. shame. You could t- oh my gosh, I can't believe like I've run around that map and it's so expansive. It's so gorgeous. There's so many different landscapes. Like they, you could tell that they work so hard on that. And then people just saying we want the old one back. It's just oh that would crush me as like an artist. I'd be like no. 
Oh, poor Tirza. Yeah. Mm. But... But I just hope that... And they've done this before with other maps that weren't completed that we haven't seen. They use them in other places. True, So yeah. if they do decide to get rid of Borderland permanently, which they, they haven't said that they're going to get rid of it permanently, hopefully it'll enter some kind of rotation with Alpine eventually. But if they do, then there's still that hope that the assets will get used in other places. Mm. Uh, at least I would, I would certainly hope so. Someone suggested it as an Edge of the Mists rotation. Maybe. Because uh, hmm. Edge, Edge of the Mist is a little PvE in places, isn't it? And by places, I mean everywhere. Yeah, so, very. Yeah. Yep. That's probably why I like it so much. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll find out on Tuesday, won't we? Indeed. Indeed we I will. guess that's when everything will be revealed. <laughs> What are you guys talking about in chat? I have no idea. Um, uh, something about old Peachy. I have no clue. How, how old were you last year? What, 50, 60? I'm 47. Yeah. 47. We've, uh, we've established this. <laughs> Someone thought I was 41 at work today. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm 29. <laughs> oh, you youngins. You whippersnappers. So, the um, the that short bow. I keep wanting to call it a long bow because it looked like a long bow. Um, we we saw it very briefly in that teaser trailer that we got, and I don't um, know what it does. I don't know what its effects or its footprints or its projectiles are, but like. I, to be honest, I had to be told that it was the new legendary. I watched the trailer looks... a couple times. I was like, oh, that's a new skin. That's... Want a Black Lion weapon set, maybe? Or, like, I was like, it, to me, it looked like it looked like a fancier version of the Ascended bow. Yeah. And it looked like a long bow. So I was like, oh, that's a fancier Ascended long bow. And then I streamed the, the next day, and they're like, did you see the new legendary bow? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, Oh, that was the legendary that bow? One. I was like, oh yeah. no, I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I it's, had no idea. This thing, it's interesting. It it looks kind of, in, yeah, it looks kind of interesting, but not legendary interesting. But then again, there's quips, so, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, it didn't show, to be fair, it didn't. The video didn't show off like what it does. Again, That's it didn't true. show off the footprints yeah. or any glow or any sounds. Or or any well, sounds. you could see that there's the smoky effect coming off of the bow and, and kind of going. It looked like it was going up the arm a little bit. Um, <clears throat> there's a shot where you can see the there's two tigers on the back of the bow, uh, and the the jewel in the eye of the tiger glows a little bit, as well as the center jewel in the bow. It it's a very large short bow. It looks like a long bow to me. Uh, I think Kit the Traveler was saying it reminds her of like the Phoenix skins, and it kind of does to some extent. Yeah. Hmm. It's. But yeah, I mean, ho hopefully, when people get to actually see it in, in the flesh, as it were. Ah. Uh, uh, do you know what? I've been I've been try I, I was just thinking did did I have one of my guitars about so I could start playing Eye of the Tiger but <laughs> I don't I just put them away in my cases, um, but it's it better be good because it's the only it's the last one we're getting for a while, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that's, ever, but that's, a very long time. Yeah, that's that's my concern that they've kind of. If it's an amazing short bow and it looks great and it turns you into a tiger or whatever when it's released, then that's fantastic. But they really undersold it in that trailer. Like, criminally undersold it in that trailer. Yeah, yeah right. Because mm. with... <laughs> It'll shoot <laughs> RPG cats. RPG cats. No! <laughs> Fiddler! <laughs> he doesn't. Because, um, I mean, hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll be in a position where they can stick another NPC in Lion's Arch so you can see what the new ones look like alongside the other three. So people can can actually see what the short bow looks like rather than just kind of just go, yeah, let's do it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, kind kind of sad they undersold it. Yeah. Mm. Shortbow's not one that like. It it's not one that I would go for. Like I don't even have Dreamer, so like it's you know when I was like, oh, it's going to be the shortbow. I'm like, well, I I use shortbow on my ranger as like my off weapon, like and that's it. So like I don't have a you know reason to go for it. But uh, but Aina has <laughs> said the they've said that the story behind it, like when you go through that journey, which I've the, as far as the lore, like in the the journey that you follow. I mean, Corvus has said it many times with Nevermore. He said that that like he just was just amazed at like the journey and like the story that it told following this raven. So, you know, I, I have faith that the story, like what people who actually do complete the collection and go through that are going to get like this really cool story. Um, mm -hmm. But. Uh, so. She... Probably won't see it. Uh oh. Ace. Come on, bud. Lay it on okay, a so, Let it all out. So people are talking about, you know, it, it doesn't look very good. And, and I don't disagree with you. I think it's underwhelming. But people are saying this is the reason the legendary team was disbanded. This is not the reason that the team was disbanded. And the looks and the effects it didn't take six devs to work on. That that's that work is done by like probably one or two people. I'm kind of guessing because somebody probably does the the effects slash animations, and somebody actually does the concept art slash modeling. Would be my guess. Maybe it's three devs, and I don't know. The bigger reason for Legendaries getting disbanded is the amount of work, the time investment that goes into the Legendary collections or that Legendary journey in order to actually create it. Once we get into the game and we can see what that Legendary journey is for the shortbow, I think we can make a better judgment on whether, you know, how good that story is or isn't, maybe. The thorn in the side is going to be, if that story is really good, if they did a really great job with the shortbow story, regardless of how it looks, maybe you don't like the look of it, and I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, the, the art and look is kind of subjective. But if the story is really good, that's going to make it hurt even more that they've discontinued mm. this process. Um, the, the truth is, is that the six people that were on that team... It's, it feels like they just weren't producing enough of those stories and enough of those collections in a timely manner. It was going to take them, you know, Mo had said, like, more than a year and they still wouldn't be finished, like, with the legendaries that were coming out. And, you know, what, why they only, you know, they, they only completed the short bow, but, like, the mace, at one point, Mo had said was close to completion. So there, there's been some kind of work done on the mace. It's not like the mace is on the cutting room floor necessarily. But who knows what other stages the other legendaries are at? Maybe not a lot of pros you know, progress, but I think that some progress was probably made on all of them, just not enough to, um, you know, meaningfully keep that team around doing what they're doing. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, it's a tough decision to make for mm -hmm. someone who's in charge, and it definitely sucks for the player base because that was a promised feature for Heart of Thorns, um, and I'm still not happy about it, to be quite honest. But if we get into the game and that Shurpo story is really good, it's gonna make it it's gonna make it hurt even worse. On the other hand, it's a double edged sword because if that short if that Shurpo story is not very good, it's gonna be like you wasted all your time on this. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it's a bit of a no win situation, really, isn't it for them? I feel kind of it's yeah. it's it's either really good and people want more, and like you say, it people are disappointed and just go, oh, Jesus Christ. But hey, mm. let's see what happens. Indeed. Hmm. So speaking <sighs> of story, let's talk Ooh, about... Ooh, I like that. Let's That's talk... a lovely segue. Thank you. Let's talk about <laughs> Salvation Pass and its story. We, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've held off talking about the, the story of Raid Wing 2. We've talked about the mechanics and the bosses and our progress. Um, but we've, we've held off talking about the story, I think, for long enough. Um, the story that there is, I'll say, because it's, it's a continuation of Spirit Veil, vale, of course. Um, and it's, we actually got a cinematic at the end of, uh, Salvation Pass, which was pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. 
It tells the story of uh, the the Mursat and the White Mantle, um, which is mm-hmm. kind of what this raid wing is all about. Um, uh, is about uh, that the the White Mantle are definitely still a thing, and are, are building up power and uh, you know getting stronger and using you know. Uh, uh, Sacrifice. Uh, using the sacrifices and and uh, building up uh, magic, very very powerful magic that they're um, yeah. that they're yeah. so, working I mean, with. So I, I think a lot of not 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 a complete retread of prophecies, but a lot of a lot of what was kind of expanded um, in or kind of story story elements that they used um, were from prophecies. So if we go all the way back, two hundred and 58 years ago, uh, 58 something, about yeah, 260 odd years ago, um, there was a chap called Justice R. Hablion, and he was like, "Yo, what's up? Um, we've got a village that's in trouble outside Lion's Arch on the Delessio Seaboard, and uh, you had to get this thing called the Eye of Janthir, and it was a big Illuminati triangle, Illuminati confirmed, and you had to go around collecting the Chosen to take them to safety." And what safety meant was that the White Mantle wrap them all up, and then they murder them on the Bloodstone to take their psychic energy or something to fuel the Massad. And I stopped paying attention because I had a dissertation to write. Um, <laughs> but it turns out that the Massad are one of the elder races, and they're the they the White Mantle think they're the gods or something, and they're trying to hold close the door of Kamali which is keeping the titans at bay and Vizier Kilbron spoilers is the bad guy who turns into the undead lich at the end he wants to open up the door of Kamali for some reason which I never fully understood because surely the end of the world is pretty bad for everybody um, and uh, in true awesome fashion he saved the day um, and the White Mantle were um, kind of uh, th- there was like an internal civil war going on in Kryta and um, there was the resistance called the Shining Blade, and they took the fight against the White Mantle, and you went through Aurora Glade and uh, and all of these things using seeds to grow bridges, like you see in Dry Top. Dry Top, yes, Dry Top. And uh, it was all really cool and interesting. And um, this is where a lot of the things about Avenia come in. Because is it is, is it Avenia that people think is L- Livia or is Somebody, co- oh no, is it a venue that people think is Countess and Nice? That's one of the theories, is it? Or no, something? they think Livia, they think yeah. Countess and Nice is Livia because at the very yeah. end of Eye of the North, Livia grabs the uh, the scepter yeah. of war, which yeah. could potentially have kept her alive for the past 250 yeah. years. Yeah, and um, so we fast forward to Salvation Pass and um, they're at it again, pretty much. And a lot of the mechanics, um, especially there's this thing that Matthias does, um, where he puts this dome around him, and it's all made up of like bloodstone shards that he throws out and mm-hmm. poisons you and that kind of thing. And you have to like reflect them back to him, and it's pretty cool. But like I said, we weren't talking about about the mechanics, but there's all these really kind of great little nods to what um, what was said in prophecies about what the White Mantle were doing, and and all that kind of thing, and. As, as as somebody who I played through um, prophecies, it was just absolutely fantastic to just go. Oh, they're doing it again. They're doing it because I think previously the, the the only nod we'd had to like Guild Wars One just about since launch was when we got the tormented weapons in the gem store, and <laughs> th- there were a couple of um other other yeah, nods and that kind of thing. But that was pretty much it. Now to just go, boom have some knowledge you all and they did say and they did say way back when they were talking about th- those big questions about um guild wars one more and how it would come in they did say that blood the bloodstone aspect would be a major story arc so it looks like they're finally coming good on it and i'm quite happy i am way more ex- this this is is it kind of feels bad but I am way more excited for the raid story with the White Mantle, the possibility of Lazarus coming back. Uh, I am way more excited for the possibilities that exist within that raid and that story yeah. than I am for 
more Elder Dragons. And, you know, maybe part of that is because we've had Elder Dragons for quite a while now. They don't necessarily feel threatening. We killed Ninja Turtle Mordromoth inside his mind like Freddy Krueger. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe that story's kind of worn on me a little bit, and I'm so excited to get back to the roots of Guild Wars with the White Mantle yeah. and the Mursats and all the implications that could be there that I just find the Raid Instance story uh, that much more intriguing mm. as well. Well, yeah, don't absolutely. you remember the hype when we got the Heart of Thorns trailers and we we saw the Exalted and everybody thought they were the Mursat? Do you remember like the community just like blowing yeah. up and the super hype? Oh my God, the Mursat! And then the disappointment when it was like, the heck is the Exalted? Like I don't... that they re- that they revealed before hot launch. I know. Just saying, just gonna throw I, that I out there. Let's just, that. just <laughs> let's just reveal all the information before you can even get in and look at them. Yeah. Um. We had a lot of arguments within Maven's TeamSpeak Discord oh, mumble, man, wherever you want to call yes. it, about, you know, could they be exalted? Could they not be exalted? Are they some kind of um, Argonites? No, what are they called? Marganites? Mar- yeah. Marganites, yeah. Marganites, could they be some kind of Marganites? Or could they be like Duena's version of Marganites? Or so many discussions that we actually had and arguments that we actually had why things could or couldn't work just on thinking that the Exalted could be Mursad. There, there's such a strong tie in there to, like, the original mm-hmm. Guild Wars theme that yeah, the Raid the was... story has me way more interested yeah. than the actual storyline. I, I appreciate the, what, what they were trying to do with the Exalted story arc, but to make them look that much like the Mursad was, I think, a bit of an error. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, absolutely, the, 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 the Raid story... The, the, the raid story is just it's really cool and it's that it's that kind of that passive storytelling that i think arena net have got better and better at as as right. the game's gone on because because in in the core game you know when it fades to those admittedly still very nice looking cutscenes where there's the two of you standing there and going backwards and forwards but now you you glean narrative yeah yeah pretty much it's like hi bah, bah, bah. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> i never but, minded but, that for the record no, it was it was a perfectly fine way of, of of telling a story, but having having that passive narrative entrenched into the game, so to or in, into the raid, so to find out more about what's going on, you have to you know you have to listen to conversations between NPCs that you that you're not involved in. That you have to pick up the torn pages of diaries that you read, the bandit journals, and 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 all that kind of thing. And of, of course. Knowing the backstory as well is, I think, is quite important. But I think it it is pretty easy to pick up the general gist of things if you're not a Guild Wars one player. That that is where they're at with their storytelling at the moment, and I think I th- I think it's a really good thing. Rather than something, just going... something that Mike I the Mighty pointed out to me the other day is that if you take Nasura into that raid wing, you can actually figure out where the portal inside the raid at the end of the raid wing there's an Asura portal you can find out where that portal links to it links to the fort vandal area that broken portal uh and if you take a necromancer in there the necromancer actually has some extra dialogue with some of the ghosts that you see sort of wandering around the instance and such Ooh, that's cool. so uh, it's really cool like we kind of seen this a little bit with the Savari. the Savari have a little bit of extra dialogue, a little bit of extra something with Heart of Storm, mm. Heart of Thorn's personal story. I love this idea that the Asura can have a tiny, just, it's just a sliver, just a tiny bit of extra flavor with the that portal. And if you play Necromancer, you have you have just a sliver of extra flavor in there, mm. talking with the ghost and such. And I, I definitely want to see like more of that going forward, uh, as, as uh, like a you know, a way to spice up the actual instance mm. and everything that's happening. Uh, the story itself is pretty cool because Matthias, uh, he has, he's, they, they talk about, you know, at first he's casually sacrificing people and going about his business and, uh, okay, let's just charge that stone up, put it in the pile, we're good to go. <laughs> and then he kind of, he gets so consumed with power, he loves the power so much that he's just like, kill all of them, just... You know, set up a line to just keep stabbing people and sacrificing them. And on top of that, they, they make this very special distinction of, in Guild Wars 1, they were sacrificing the Chosen. 
these mm-hmm. very magical, magically enhanced uh, people. They were chosen for a reason. They, they were special for a reason. And Matthias doesn't necessarily have the tools available, I guess, to find Chosen. He just grabs anybody. You know, you, you mm-hmm. see uh, Hobo John sitting on the street corner. Matthias is grabbing him and throwing him in the camp for sacrifice later <laughs> because he mm-hmm. just needs bodies at this point, you know. And uh, his whole story is that his power kind of goes out of control. He can't control. There, there's notes and stuff, and there's mechanics in the fight. Uh, about he can't control his powers anymore. There's random snowstorms that happen and lightning storms that happen. Uh, and that whole thing is very cool. And because there's there's a correlation there as well, because we killed Mordramoth, and that power from the dragon swept out over uh, the spirit veil, that, like, re-energized the dead spirits that were kind of all cooped up and laying there. And Gorsival is sort of a side effect of that as well. Mm. Uh, so there's just it's just very cool. Everything sort of, you know, uh, intertwines, interacts with each other, and I'm really, really interested to see uh, where it's going. He, you know, there's this whole passage that refers to, you know, he who is he? Is that Lazarus the Dyer? Is it yeah. somebody else? Mm-hmm. Are we going to see the Mursat come back? If the Mursat does come back, is that going to be one of the raid wing fights? You know. Spectral Agony. Spectral Agony is the new uh, oh, DPS man. check. <laughs> Another kind of agony check for everybody. <laughs> if you watched, uh, they no. did a guild chat a couple weeks ago talking about where they talked with Bobby Stein about the ra- the story in Salvation Pass. And um, he said that he was really excited for, um, and of course they always say this, I'm really excited for the next one, you know, I'm really excited for what's to come. Mm. Um so hopefully they're just going to continue delving into this story. Um, of course, there's always the feedback, and people are saying it in chat about the this you know this cool story being locked behind raids, and for you know players who don't do raiding can't experience it. Um, he said in that same guild chat, if you watched it, that uh, and again this wasn't a promise or anything, but they did mention it. He said that they are they are looking into possible solutions for people. Um, who don't raid to experience the story. And of course they put the cinematic up on their YouTube channel so everyone could see it. Um, you know, and then they had the whole guild chat talking about it. So, um, you know, they're working on an in game or they said, I'm not, I'm not saying like any promises or like I said, I didn't promise anything, but they said that they are, you know, it's, it's a possibility that they're going to make, uh, the raid story, um, you know, experienceable, um, for people who don't do raids. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's maybe, you know, but, you know, I, I've talked about with my guide, a couple other people, uh, this idea of an infantile mode for raids, um, yeah, to, super to, adventure box cloud to, rainbows to extend, clouds. yeah, to extend the joke, there's, <laughs> there's little super adventure clouds and you just walk over Gorsival <laughs> down the other side, yes. you're good to go, but, uh, no, in, in all seriousness, an infantile oh, mode or God. a story mode or whatever you want to call it, an easy mode that doesn't actually reward you with any meaningful loot, uh, the bosses would be very simplistic, not not necessarily teach you maybe a whole lot about the raid. That could go good or bad, depending on how you feel about that. But uh, make it much easier so that people can go through and experience the story bits and the story aspects of the raid without really having to necessarily um you know get the proper kills and get the proper loot and proper rewards for that this would be a whole separate thing and i I know that's kind of a some people are very for this some people don't like this idea but i really think that adding some kind of story mode some kind of infantile mode whatever you want to call it uh i think that would benefit the player base as a whole Uh, it allows them to get the story they're not going to get your special rewards. They're not going to get the same feeling or achievement of, you know, killing Gorsival or killing Vale Guardian or anything like that. So, I don't know. If if they if they're gonna Maybe. do that, if they're gonna do that, it needs to be empty, completely empty. And they could just run through and only have uh, neutral NPCs that give the story. And that there's there's the bloke Maybe. at the end. There's the bloke at the end in the temple. Is it's the Temple of Salvation? 
where once you beat Matthias, there's the bloke where you can watch the cinematic and all that kind of thing. Mm. Like, I mean, I, th- I think this it, it's fairly similar to my opinion of soloable era that I'm just like, no, come on, there's 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 got to be a point where you cut off a thing that you can do solo and a point where you need people for it. And even in, even in, like, you, you arguably get, well, no, you don't arguably, you get a ton of Guild Wars 1 lore in the Ara, in the Ara Explorable Paths. Hmm. And just because you yeah. get a ton of lore that's kind of might eventually wrap round to the overarching story, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should make it available to everybody just because it might be important for some subplot at some point. And I don't get me wrong, I, I, I can see exactly what you're saying. I, I understand completely what you're saying. But, I, you know, with, with, without going learn to raid, because that's not what I'm about at all, but I think there's there's got to be a point where if you raid, you get this experience. If you play dungeons as a group, you get this experience. And that is how it, to me, that is how it has to be. When push comes to shove, it's an MMO. It's massively multiplayer online. Mm. And I understand that, you know, people enjoy playing on their own. I enjoy playing on my own. But the majority of MMOs are based around content that you can usually do a whole lot of it solo, but group content is specifically made for groups. And it... Sure. Mm. Uh, you and, and Othog, I just have to say that you're both wrong. <laughs> uh, I disagree with you completely. <laughs> And I understand that, you know, the story is part of the reward. Yeah. I think it's a mistake. I think it is a strong mistake to lock away a story from the players who want to experience it. I do not believe that you should receive the boss's loot or the rewards. I think right. there needs to be, you know, I think you need to stand firm on that and not allow them to really experience the boss or its mechanics Absolutely. or the loot, all that kind of stuff. But I do think I don't see the problem with allowing players to experience the story in one way or another. Maybe it doesn't have to be infantile mode. Maybe there could be a some kind of empty instance like Alex is saying. Because you know what's happening right now? Here's what's happening right now. The experienced raiders are going through and they're clearing the raid. And then they're saying to their guildies, their friends, anyone who wants to say... Come join my empty instance, mm. and you can experience the story. So it's right. happening anyway, right. just True. in a very convoluted way. Uh, very good point. It, it, there's, they're already working around it and saying, forget raiding. I'll just go experience the story through somebody else's clear raid instance. By the way, thank you to anybody who does that, because there's a lot of people out there who just aren't interested in raiding but still love the story and the lore of Guild Wars 2. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a smart idea to section off that part of your community just because you want raids to be hard and elite which by the way i am fully behind raids being super difficult i want them to be more difficult i i think raid wing 2 is a little bit too easy because uh, of a variety of things mechanics wise i think it's fantastic but you know there's there's this soft dps check but anyway that's that's a different topic yeah i think i mean i i I completely understand what you're saying i think that it was it was a mistake to lock the story behind the raid even if if i think it, it might have been about if if the raid had its own separate little story rather than something that's so central to the guild wars lore as as something like the, as something like the white mantle if it had been no i don't know so like if it had been a one off shot about i don't know a, a cult behind um, Barish Ossa, and they still worshipped Abaddon in the jungle or something. If they could knock that out and have a high priestess of, of Abaddon at the end, something like that, that's just contained in its own little thing, which was done and completely dusted, because Abaddon is safely locked away again down in the Realm of Torment. Having something like that, where you can just one-shot it, it's self-contained, I think that would be the way to go. And the, you still get the experience of it relating to previous Guild Wars lore. But rather than have something that they've that they've talked about that say will be part of what's going on with there's already there's already massive theories about how the bloodstones interact with the eternal alchemy and the big um, omads machine cutscene 
Um, but that, yeah, that's. I, I I do see what you're saying. I'm just. Hmm. Jebro is absolutely right. He said Rift had this system where um, you went in and you fought these bosses in a very solo, singular kind of mode. They didn't really have very many mechanics. They were very pushovers, and it let you experience the story. I can promise you 100% that did not affect the raiding community that was in Rift, which, by the way, had some of the best raids I have ever experienced. Way better than WoW. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, far better than anything I've experienced, even in Guild Wars 2, which I absolutely love, don't get me wrong. But the raid encounters and the raiding experience in Rift, at least for Hammernell and the one that came after it, was absolutely mind-blowingly fantastic. Um, very complex, fun fights uh, within that game. And they were able to deliver the story to the community without having this this upset, you know, people being upset about it, uh, like like there seems to be about that whole thing. And I got, if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. I understand that. Yeah, it's just that you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what a lot I of kid, people have to remember that haven't raided, so they don't they haven't experienced the story firsthand in raids, is that the 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 way that the lore and the story is presented in raids does not equal the way it's told in Living World. It's completely different. You're not following an NPC around and they're fighting with you and you know they're saying stuff and all you know all this like it's told very very piecemeal and very very like secondhand. Like you know, you you beat a boss and you might have like a, a captain of the guard or something come and, and talk a couple lines to you, but you're not getting like paragraphs of dialogue and all of these cutscenes and all this, you know, this huge experience from raids. That's not how raid the raid story is told. And I, I think that that's fantastic. I think they've designed it very, very well because, and as they've said, there's people who don't care to be about the story. There's there's raiders who could give a crap about the story. They don't care. They just want to go in there and fight the bosses and you know and uh, do that. You know, make those accomplishments, get the achievements, get the rewards. Um, so they've done a very good job of telling, obviously, a a very um, you know in depth story through you go and look for torn journal pages you go and look for you know scraps of paper that give you little tidbits um you're interacting with objects in the world that give you a story you know oh this this campfire has been lit recently you know and so it's that kind of stuff i mean we didn't get any kind of cutscenes or anything in in spirit veil we got one in salvation pass but it was like what 20 seconds or so and you can go on youtube and see it and and we've known this for we've known this since the launch of the game really that arena net has never put the whole entire lore in the game if you are that interested in the lore you have to go to blog posts you have to go to guild chat you have to go outside of the game to find that bad. And mm. that's that sucks. It should be all be in the game, but it's not. And and we've we've known this. So unfortunately, um, I guess I should say fortunately, it's you do have an option if you don't raid. Um, you do have an option to go to the wiki and read line for line all of the dialogue. I mean, I've gone to the wiki and read the the, the all the dialogue, and there's stuff that I missed from you know you can easily miss stuff in inside the raid so it's mm. not as guided and you're gonna see absolutely everything um like living world so it's not the same experience um and i'm not saying that it should be that way i'm not saying well duh just go to the wiki or you don't have to experience it it's all you know you can see the cutscene on youtube um there's uh, there's there's of course there's that experience of being there and experiencing it as it happens in the game um but it's not like it's not required and i know that that's so people are, are still not going to be satisfied with that and that's fine um but it is mm. a, a much lighter kind of piecemeal way of telling of telling a story yeah um tochi Pest said something in chat about guild wars 2 becoming a raid centric game um at the moment or at least when raids were were originally pitched to the guild wars 2 community it's like right we're going to have this in the raids were supposed to be specifically for the high end kind of two or three percent uh, of players who wanted that high-end challenge the um the game still has 
a whole ton of stuff for people who don't want to raid. I mean, you've got you've got your three game modes. You've got World v World, PvP, and PVE. And within PVE, you have your dungeons, which are supposed to be getting a revamp come Tuesday, so they're more rewarding for you. You have fractals, which are like instance mini dungeons, each with a different setting that you can find people and do them with. Now, each of those are that they're, they're not. They don't have the raid mentality. You can dip in and out every 10, 15 minutes from doing a couple of paths, and you can just dive in with with anybody. So the way that the, the the way that we're banging on about raids at the moment, I can fully appreciate that it does make us sound like raids are the be all and end all of Guild Wars 2 at the moment. The fact is, it's new content. Um, we're pretty psyched about it. Um, and it's it's just interesting to talk about because we we've all been playing since launch and so you know we did um you know we we, we started running the dungeons back in 2012 and when we get this new harder content that we want to push our abilities within the game we kind of get you know kind of really into it but if someone's coming from another game and saying hey you know i i, I don't want to be be part of that raiding kind of thing there is so much more in the game for you to do um there's the story there's there's fractals there's dungeons there's map completion there's world bosses there's there's achievement hunting there's jumping puzzles mini dungeons uh role playing if you're into that kind of thing um and it's it, it is all there for you. So if if we are sitting here and we and we do end up sounding a little bit elitist about the kind of content that we want, that is certainly not the point. That's well, at least that's not where I'm coming from. Maybe all of you guys are sitting there on a pile of Guild Wars Two money with uh, the word one hundred elitist dollars" written on it, but but I'm not. I'm sat <laughs> I'm sat on a rickety old chair here. So, <laughs> but. I, th I think there's a little. I think there's some unfair comparisons being made in chat right now, but I guess that's sort of besides the point. Uh, I, I would say this though: um, if you feel like you're losing rewards because there is now this story mode that gives people the story, uh, there there are there could be solutions to that as well. You could stagger the release of story mode uh, a week or two. So that guilds can clear the raid so that you can still feel like I got my story reward before everybody else. But the truth of it is this. People are already circumventing your reward system for story. They're already bypassing it by beating the raid and allowing others to come in and experience it, which I think is a good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing for the record. But they're already circumventing your reward. So that reward that you worked hard to get, people are getting that reward without doing any of the work whatsoever. So I don't really think that's as strong an argument as some people might think it is. Mm -hmm. And I think you made a good point earlier, uh, Inks, that like you, you do have an option currently. If you don't raid, you can find someone who has completed it for the week, go in and, you know, find all the journal entries and experience a bunch of it, experience a, a bunch of the story, experience the environments, which are very, very beautiful they're they're wonderfully designed um you know but then you don't get the rewards you don't get by the way i'm so happy that um like the the rewards uh that you can buy with magnetite shards are locked behind having defeated that boss yeah like yeah. i don't think that i should be able to and, and when i when i uh saw that magnetite shards were the same it was the same currency in, in wing one and two um, I was like, well, I don't want to be able to go in and buy, you know, before I've even attempted Slothazar and, and buy Matthias's staff, you know, um, no matter how mm. bad I want it. It's like, no, I have to work <laughs> to defeat Matthias if I want that, if I want to just buy that staff. So I think that's, yeah, cool. I, I think that's pretty cool. Hmm. Absolutely. <sighs> well, we have been talking for over an hour, so I think we're we going to end the show, but we're going to continue with the post show so don't go anywhere we'll be back what you, you i was gonna say can we very quickly talk about the most important change that's coming in on tuesday the 19th what's that and that is the ranger sword auto attack <laughs> <It's> <laughs> how fixed. happy are you about that <laughs> oh my god finally <laughs> For those who don't know, Ranger, auto Ranger Sword Auto Attack made you stand in place and it had a tiny little knockback on it as well, 
which people used to get really annoyed at in Crucible of Eternity because it kept knocking Subject Alpha back. Um, but now they've got rid of that, that you can you can move while it does it, and good job, ArenaNet. To be honest, you could put it in the gem store as a fix, and I'd still buy it. <laughs> that's so much I appreciate. Oh, the rage. <laughs> oh, the salts. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Good job. Good job, Anet. Good job. <laughs> He's excited. He approves. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, stay tuned here again for the post show. We'll be right back. And if you're watching on YouTube, check down into the description below for links to all of our channels and more Guild Wars 2 content. Follow us on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all the places. And we will see you next week. Might be on a different day. Looking at Wednesday. We got PAX East next week. I'm going to be gone. So keep an eye on the mm. schedule and keep an eye on Twitter for when that's going to be. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>